What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my review of the Yumidigi Bison GT. So let's get started. Now I'd like to start off and mention that Yumidigi was kind enough to send this phone out to me to cover here on the channel, but all opinions expressed in this video are completely my own. In addition to that, I've covered a variety of different Yumidigi products here on the channel over the last couple of years, so I definitely recommend that you take a look at all that content to learn even more about this brand. Now the Yumidigi Bison GT is a follow up to the regular Yumidigi Bison that was launched last year. And essentially, Yumidigi is taking what already was working out really well with the regular Bison and they've stepped things up a notch. Now before I show you everything that there is to know about the actual phone itself, let's take a quick look and see what all comes included here in the box. So here is the box the phone does come in. You can see right here, Yumidigi smartphone. Here's a list of some of the major specifications for the phone, but we'll be going over all of this throughout the video. But essentially in the box, we're getting a double-sided USB-C cable. We're getting a 33 watt Yumidigi fast charger, which is also very impressive and a pretty nice surprise to see that this is included here. And we're getting a Yumidigi Bison quick start guide. And if you're wondering where the SIM card removal tool is, don't worry about that because with this phone, you can actually open up the SIM card slot with just your finger. So that's pretty awesome and we'll talk more about that later on in the video. Now to see the most up-to-date pricing for the Yumidigi Bison GT and the various configurations of the phone available, definitely take a look at the link in the video description. That'll take you over to Yumidigi's store over on eBay. Now with the Yumidigi Bison GT, we're getting a large 6.67 inch display. Now this display is LCD at 1080p. We're getting a PPI here of 395 and a 20 by nine aspect ratio. So a more narrow but taller form factor. And in general, I'm very happy with how the display on the phone itself does look. Colors are really good. Things look super crisp and clear. And I also like that we're getting a hole punch here for the front facing camera. So in general, this phone is a very good device for content consumption. Now the actual front facing camera itself is 32 megapixels and stay tuned for later on in the video as I'll be showing you a variety of different photo and video samples from the actual phone itself. Now with the Yumidigi Bison GT, we're getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage and we're also getting micro SD card expansion. So it definitely is really nice to see here that we are getting so much storage built into the phone. Now with this device, there is no wireless charging. There's also no face unlock. However, we do get a fingerprint sensor on the side of the phone. Now what's interesting is that the fingerprint sensor is actually located on the left side of the device. So that's really the first time I've seen that. Typically it's on the right side of the device or in the display or on the rear. But once you get used to it, it's not an issue at all. And what's great about it as well is that the fingerprint sensor is very fast and responsive. Now taking a look at the back side of the phone, we do have a quad camera setup. We're getting a 64 megapixel main camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can take photos at up to 120 degrees. We're getting a five megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and we're getting a five megapixel macro camera for close up images. So it is nice that we are getting portrait mode here with the Yumidigi Bison GT with both the rear and front cameras. Now with this device, we're getting eight gigabytes of RAM and we're getting the MediaTek Helio G95 processor. So in general, expect to get very decent performance here at the phone. From my experience, things run really smoothly. I haven't really noticed any lag. So in general, if you're looking for a phone that will perform well, then I feel like the Yumidigi Bison GT might be something that you might wanna consider. Now obviously, with this configuration of RAM and the processor, you're not gonna be getting the performance that you'd be getting with a flagship device, like the Galaxy S21 Ultra, for example, but then again, this phone is gonna perform much better than many other devices under $500. Now I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test here with the phone. I got a single core score of 515 and a multi-core score of 1634. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then compare your scores to these scores to get a better idea of whether or not the Yumidigi Bison GT is gonna be a performance upgrade for you. Now with this device, video recording maxes out at 1080p for the front facing camera and 4K with the rear camera. And again, a little bit later on in the video, I'll be showing you some samples from that. Now with this device, we're getting a very large battery at 5,150 milliamp hours and we're getting 33 watt fast charging. 
So it is really nice to see that not only are we getting a really big battery here with the phone, but also that battery is able to be recharged pretty quickly. Now the software that we're getting here with the phone is Android 10, and most likely this phone will not be getting Android 11 based off of all of Umitigi's other phones that they've launched in the past. Typically, all of their devices don't get updated to newer versions of Android, so you will be stuck with whichever version of the software originally ships with the phone. That being said, it's not necessarily a deal breaker because all of your apps and everything will still run fine, but if you are someone that does typically like to get all the new Android updates as they are released, then you might be a little bit disappointed. But again, if you just want a phone that does work with all your various apps, then it won't be an issue here. And in general, it's a pretty stock Android layout. They have customized the software a little bit and added some different features that do work with all the expanded hardware features that we're getting here with the phone. So that is a good thing. But they didn't necessarily customize Android just for the sake of customizing it. So I do appreciate that. Now with this device, we are getting NFC, which does mean that the phone does work with Google Pay which I certainly appreciate. What's awesome as well is that this phone does feature IP68 and IP69K dust and water resistance. So what this is gonna mean is that with the Umidigi Bison GT, you can put it underwater for up to 30 minutes and up to 1.5 meters. In addition to that, the phone is drop resistant up to 1.5 meters as well. And this phone also features a built-in barometer. With the Umidigi Bison GT, we do get two extra buttons here. The one button is the smart key, which I'll show you in a second how to customize that. And this other key here is used for push to talk. So if you are into that, then you are able to do that here with the phone. But now that we've gone over the various features and specifications of the Umidigi Bison GT, let's take a closer look at the actual hardware of the phone itself. So again, like I mentioned earlier, this phone has a really good looking display. I'm certainly a big fan of that. I also like that we are getting the hole punch for the front facing camera. Overall, the phone features a really rugged design, so it is definitely very durable here. And then of course, it is waterproof and shockproof. But as I kind of showed you earlier on the left side of the phone, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. We have the fingerprint sensor. We have the push to talk button. Then on the right side of the phone, we have volume up, volume down, the power button. And then we have that smart key right here. Then up top here, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the microphone and USB-C port for charging and data transfer. Then taking a look at the back side of the phone, we have the speaker right here. We also have the camera module and the barometer. And also we do have a lanyard hook here too. So if you are someone that likes to go hiking, for example, or maybe you're just kind of prone to dropping your phone or losing your phone, technically you can attach a lanyard if you want to, and then either tether that to something or just put it around your wrist. It's up to you. From my experience of taking photos and videos with the Umidigi Bison GT, things are at least good enough. But on the other hand, I wouldn't say that the quality is perfect. Now, if photography is not your main priority with the Umidigi Bison GT, then this probably isn't really a big deal, but I feel like some of the colors are a little bit off. For example, some of the greens look extremely bright, and in general, the colors from a lot of these photos just don't look too accurate. But the good news though is that many of these pictures are very clear and good looking, so if you are someone that does like to edit your photos after you take them, then I feel like you will be able to work around this. But I just wanna make sure you know what you're getting into before getting the phone, but I feel like also overall, the photo and video quality that you're able to see here in this video pretty much speaks for itself and will give you a good idea of what to expect here with the phone. But let's now take a look at some video samples. And here is a 1080p front facing video from the Umidigi Bison GT. Let me know what you think of both the video and audio quality as well. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here coming at you with a 1080p test video from the Umidigi Bison GT. This is with the main camera right now. There is autofocus in video mode, but it's not quite as responsive as some other phones I've used before.
And here is a 4K test video from the Umidigi Bison GT. Autofocus actually seems to work a lot better in 4K. Not sure why that is. So in conclusion, there's definitely a lot to like about the Yumidigi Bison GT. For example, I'm a big fan of having all these various cameras. I know I mentioned earlier that some of the colors are not necessarily as accurate as I'd like them to be, but on the other hand, I do like that we do get so many different abilities, and in general, the quality is good enough. I also like how good this display looks. The colors are super bright. Things just look really nice in general, so that's really good. I also like that the display is very large too, so that makes the phone even better for content consumption. And then when it comes to performance, the fact that we're getting 8GB of RAM and the MediaTek Helio G95 is also a really good thing to see. There's really only a few things that I wish were different with this phone. The first thing is, I wish the fingerprint sensor was on the right side of the phone instead of on the left side. And I also wish the power button doubled as the fingerprint sensor because typically if I'm going to need to use the fingerprint sensor, I'm also gonna to need to use the power button. So having the two combined into just one area would be super convenient. Now I do appreciate that we get a dedicated button for push to talk and then we also get the dedicated smart key. However, just by having so many different buttons all around this phone, does make it pretty easy for me to accidentally press on them. And especially this smart key right here. I feel like every time I use this phone, at least at some point or another, I happen to accidentally tap on it. So that does get a little bit annoying. So I do wish that maybe they put some of these smart keys higher up on the side of the phone. I know that there's not a ton of space here, but at the same time, it would be nice just to be able to grip the phone and not have to worry about accidentally tapping on any buttons. But as far as the design goes, beyond that, I feel like everything is really good here with the phone, and I like that we're getting some really durable materials in general. That's great. So if you are looking for a budget, durable phone that also gives you very good performance, then I feel like you should consider getting the Umidigi Bison GT. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Definitely make sure to take a look at my other content here on the channel, but this is Kevin here. This is the Umidigi Bison GT, and I will see you in the next video.